Ebola was in Texas. Ebola made a visit. Killed that man in Dallas. Five days that man melted to death. What happened to the brother in Dallas? Where was the secret serum is what we all said. I remember in the beginning of Ebola, there were two American doctors that got sick in Africa. They flew them in a private jet straight to Atlanta to the CDC. I didn't even know CDC saw patients. <laughs> there was said they administered what the New York Times called a secret serum. I don't know what's in it. It's just like Colonel Sanders' recipe. <laughs> but both of these motherfuckers survived. These doctors, thank God, are healthy. They are out there somewhere tonight at Whole Foods, touching vegetables, walking around. <laughs> Everything's okay. Hey, Frank, how are you? Oh, you didn't hear? I had a bowl last week, but uh, I'm doing all right now. I was, I was bleeding out of my eyes and anus, so I got concerned, but I'm okay. What happened to the brother in Dallas? They just rubbed some Vicks on that nigga. I knew he wasn't going to make it. I already know. Sad. I saw in the New York Times, uh, they said Ebola is the new AIDS. <laughs> Isn't that something? Here I am thinking that old AIDS was working just fine. <laughs> and they already have a new AIDS out. Isn't that amazing how they do that? Isn't it weird how there's a disease that just starts in 1980 and it doesn't kill anybody but niggas, fags, and junkies? Isn't that a, a fucking amazing coincidence? that this disease hates everybody that old white people hate. I think either God is white or the government hid that shit in disco balls. Only fun people get AIDS. <laughs> Last month on the front of the New York Times, the measles was a headline. I had to check the date of the paper. I was like, measles, what is this, 1850? What the fuck is this? Why is measles in the news? <laughs> Turns out they were trying to decide if mandatory vaccinations for children is the way we all want to go. Any thoughts? I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Was, uh, first of all, black people generally don't trust doctors. <laughs> you know, after the Tuskegee experiments and all that shit. More importantly, don't forget, Michael Jackson was killed by a doctor. Granted, he was doing drugs, but if I was a heroin addict and I had a licensed physician injecting heroin in me, I should survive that. <laughs> I'd just be looking like, oh, I'm good, right? I'm good? It's not too much, is it? <laughs> Dr. Butterfingers killed Michael Jackson. After that, I was like, fuck going to the doctor. <laughs> the fuck am I getting my kids vaccinated for an old ass disease like measles? This is ridiculous. You might as well give them a diarrhea shot if you're so worried. Diarrhea has a bigger body count than the measles do. You know, diarrhea is funny today, but a hundred years ago, if your ass had diarrhea, you were a goner. There was like a zero chance of survival. You get that first squirt, uh-oh. Better start getting my affairs in order. But I don't have much time. It's diarrhea, it's very serious. You just watch your buddy slowly die in a pool of his own shit. Oh. I give up diarrhea. <laughs> Nowadays, your buddy just be like, oh, we got diarrhea, just eat a banana, nigga, drink some water, let's get to the club. <laughs> Still make last call. <laughs> Tough time for the blacks. <laughs> These are not good times for the blacks. I don't know if you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Police are killing us again. very unfortunate set of circumstances because we were doing very well. You know, America has a racial hot seat. I think we can all agree that that's the truth. And we can also agree that that hot seat is traditionally occupied by African Americans in general, African American men in particular. Although I can see that in recent years, that seat has been occupied by, by Mexicans and I dare say Arabs. And we, the black Americans, would like to thank you both for your sacrifice and your struggle. 
We needed a break. We needed a goddamn break. We all go through something, but at least I can leave my backpack someplace. If you Arab and forget to backpack, you got about 20 minutes before they send that robot to blow your shit up. Hi, <laughs> Fuhat. <laughs> now ISIS is number one on the terrorist charts. And ISIS is fucking scary. Because if ISIS catches you, they're going to cut your head off. That's what they do. I've seen them do it on YouTube. It was fucking awful. He looked right in the camera and said, Obama, I am back. <laughs> I saw that shit. I said, oh my God. Don't like. <laughs> How is this guy cutting people's heads off on YouTube? I can't even post a dick pic and this motherfucker is decapitating people. I'm gonna have to change my settings. You know, everyone has it hard, but I think harder than black people and harder than Arabs and harder than Mexicans, you know who has it the worst? Fat black people. <laughs> it's hard for white people to understand, but that's what I'm saying is very true. Fat black people have a really rough road because all manner of things kill white people, but you know what kills more black people than anything, more than police and terrorism? Salt, nigga, regular. Here, white people are getting Ebola cures and shit, and meanwhile, I'm dying from fucking the flavoring. <laughs> Look, honestly, let me, I'll stop talking about it. Let me say this, though. Let me just say this. C can, we all, can we all just say that we've seen it coming? Were you surprised? It's like when that guy threw that banana at me. Do you think I was surprised? Hell no. I've been in show business 30 years. I was expecting this banana. I knew one of these nights, it's like somebody gonna throw a banana at me one of these nights, niggas. Cause that's how it starts with the name calling. Like that Paula Dean. remember Paula Dean got fired from the Food Network? If you know anything about show business, it is really hard to get fired from the fucking Food Network. And they drop that bitch like a hot potato. All because she called somebody an N-word 30 years before she had a show. I don't know who she said it to, but whoever it was was just looking at her like, I'm gonna get you for this bitch. <laughs> and she came back 30 years later like a Bill Cosby rape and sunk a battleship. And every black person was mad, but we weren't like that mad. I was just like, well, How's this bitch gonna call me a nigga when she taught me how to fry chicken? That's not fair. <laughs> I think Donald Sterling shit was more serious. Remember Donald Sterling, he used to own the Clippers and then he got caught on a secretly recorded tape saying some very unsavory things about African-Americans. And there's a lesson in that for all of us. The lesson is, if you are old and white and racist in this great country, whatever you do, don't tell your black girlfriend about that shit because that's who made the tape. She recorded all that shit and the tape was terrible. He was like, stop bringing these black guys to my games. First, we're all confused. Like, well, how the fuck are you gonna have a game without us? But it turned out that the black guy he was speaking of was none other than Magic Johnson, the billionaire. Unbelievable. Never even mentioned the fact that he had AIDS, which is... This guy must be really racist if AIDS is the footnote. Well, you gotta be careful, baby. He got the old Ebola. You can say what you want about that girl, but I'm gonna tell you right now, she is a goddamned hero.
Because you might have thought these things were happening before, but now you can see it all in front of you without a shadow of a doubt. That shit actually went down. She sucked that old guy's dick. <laughs> she really took one for the team on that one. That's really gross. This dick is like 80 years old. It's like tasting history. <laughs> like five wars on it, civil rights movement, the Great Depression. This guy's been fucking from 40 years before Bill Cosby's first rape. This is a very old man. It's a very old penis. <laughs> but all that shit is still, it's just name calling. It, like, name calling does not break the modern black man. That's not gonna do the trick. I don't give a fuck about that. Like, if I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken, Ku Klux Klan hood on top of their head, what do you think I'm gonna do in this day and age? Run out of Kentucky Fried Chicken? Not if I'm hungry. I'll go straight to the front. Hey man, let me get a two piece. I don't give a fuck what he says. You want a biscuit with that nigger? I thought it came with a biscuit. What's all this attitude? I want a two piece. Chop, chop. You know what it is. But I'm not gonna be mad. Why would I be mad? He's the one that's gotta work at Kentucky Fried Chicken, not me. How about this? What if, I, what if I lived in Austin and I had a white girlfriend? It's possible in Austin. As a matter of fact, some people say it's necessary, but that's not the point. <laughs> and me and my white girlfriend at home one night and we're just doing what lovers do. Maybe she's butt naked and she's down on one knee giving me a hand job. I love a good hand job. And she's really jerking me off. You know, getting her obliques nice and tight. I got a huge dick, so she's like, hmm, 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 hmm. And I'm like, wow, this really feels wonderful. I, I think I'm gonna come, nigger. I know that's a tough one. But what do you think I'm gonna do? Hey! That's no time for integrity, ladies and gentlemen. I'm busting that nut in her face. I'll sort through the ethics later. But I'm what they call a man of his word. If I say I'm coming, oh, I'm coming. I don't give a fuck what happens. God forbid somebody could shoot me. If I say I'm coming, it's still like, Pff, oh. Doesn't mean I like getting shot. Yeah, tough time for the blacks. I'm not gonna say nothing about the police. I'll, I'll leave that for Chris Rock. 